Hi guys, my name is Darcy um, and I just wanted to talk to you in this video um, about some ways to get organized, to keep organized, um, with, um, especially with everybody going back to school. I know um, everybody has busy schedules um, between um, your kids' sports, games, practices, things like that, um, your work schedules, um, bills that have to be paid, meals that have to be planned. Um, I know it gets to just be a lot for everybody to keep up with. So I just wanted to share um, some of my tips for how I stay organized. Um, not really in any particular order. I'm just going to share you share with you some of the things that I use. Um, first of all, um, I recently uh, became unemployed. So I, in addition to selling money um, and managing my my blog at preserving my sanity. Um, I decided to start my own digital marketing company called Digital Darcy. Um, and my husband actually has a couple of side projects too. So between all of that, that I help him manage and that I'm managing for myself and task lists and um, things to do and things to follow up on and all kinds of stuff like that, um, I actually found a software application online called Trello.com. Um, I'm not actually using it for like the personal household things right now. I'm using it just for our business things, but it would absolutely work for personal use. Um, it's a little bit like Pinterest actually. Um, it's free, I should say that first. It's totally free. You can just go on their website, create a login for yourself um, and check it out. But um, it lets you create boards. So you can create as many boards as you want and then within each board you have tasks that you add. Um, and then within each task, you can have like checklists and, and tasks and due dates and things like that. So for example, um, you might have one board for appointments that need to be scheduled. And then once they're scheduled, um, you know, dentist appointments, doctor appointments, things like that. Once they're scheduled, you could put a task in there with the appointment date as the due date um, in the software. And it has an app that you can download on your phone or your tablet or whatever you want as well. Um, and it's actually really easy to use from your phone. Um, and then you can have it remind you of due dates too. So you can plug everything in there and have it remind you as things happen. Um, so you could have one board for appointments, like I mentioned. You could have, um, you know, maybe have one board for each kid if you want to organize it that way. Or one board for school things and one board for sports activities. Um, you can have one board for meal planning. You can have a board for, um, you know, you and your husband or significant others work schedules. Um, it's really kind of however you want to set it up for yourself. Um, like, for example, for me, I have one board for each of the businesses I mentioned. And then I have like a personal development board where I, I keep track of some things that I've run across online. Um, so if you find things online that you want to come back to later, you can go save them in there. Um, it's, it's really a cool system. Um, so check that out. I'll put a link in the comments for you. It's Trello.com. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is while you're on Facebook, if you didn't know this, um, you're browsing through Facebook and you see something you want to save for later. You know, maybe it's something from the school about um, a date to remember, or maybe it's a recipe you want to try next week or um, a news article you don't have time to read right now but you want to come back to whatever um, up in the top right corner of that post you can click the little down arrow and there's an option to save for later or save um, so you save it and then over on the left side of your screen there's a link that says saved so anytime you have some extra time you can go over to that saved link on the left side of your Facebook screen and it'll pull up a list of all that stuff you've saved um, so that's kind of cool. One other thing to mention at Trello is there is a way to set up email addresses for each board. So you can actually email things directly to yourself to go to the Trello board. Kind of cool if you're sitting on the couch and you find something, um, you're nine o'clock at night, you're sitting on the couch, you're on your phone, you find something that you want to do the next day related to one of your boards. You just go in there, um, copy the link, email it to yourself to that Trello board. And then it just goes right on there for you, right from your email. Um, and I can help you with that. If that's something you want to do, um, I can sure tell you how to do that. You can just message me or whatever. Um, another thing I wanted to mention um, is in your email. Um, one way to kind of keep up with your emails, we all get way too many emails. Um, 
I try to delete the spammy ones as they come in as I can, um, just so I don't get overwhelmed. Um, I've been signing up for a lot of stuff lately related to my new business, so it's kind of hard to filter through all the stuff I need versus what I don't. Um, so try to delete things as they come in if you can. Um, but as far as the things you need, the things you need to follow up on, most email applications are going to have some sort of flag or, or starred option. Um, if you're in Gmail, you can just click the star and it'll, it'll put that email over in the starred folder on the left side of your screen. So you know what you have to follow up on. So the, the important stuff doesn't get mixed up with the not as important stuff, basically. So I use that starred feature a lot. I'm a Gmail user. Another um, option, like if you use um, Microsoft Outlook, in there, there's a way to flag your email as a task. So if there's an email that you received or sent that you want to follow up on, you can have it saved to your task list um, from directly from the email box. So that way, you know, um, you know, you to follow up on it. So that's something that's really helpful for Outlook users. Um, other platforms, I'm sure they all have a similar thing where you can either star an email or flag it or whatever to help you manage that email box just a little bit. Um, another thing to mention is passwords. We all have so many websites we subscribe to, um, you know, your bank account, your insurance account, um, your email address, your other email address. Um, it seems like every day I'm signing up for something new. Um, and it was making me crazy because I would go to log into something and, you know, all the websites have different rules. Um, some of them make you have a capital letter and a lowercase and a special character and a number or some of them don't and you know you don't want your password to be exactly the same on every website anyway because then if a hacker hacks your account then they actually can get into all of your accounts so you want to try to mix up your passwords a little bit if you can um, and it's just too much to keep up with so one thing I did um, and if you do this you know somebody asked me the other day I was talking to a potential client about this and she said well what do you do if you lose it because what I'm about to tell you is I bought this little purple book from the dollar store it was like a dollar um, and I have all of my passwords in here I started out with it alphabetical um, and of course I didn't leave enough space in between the pages and so now it's just kind of a big mess um, as I've added things I just add them in the back so at some point I'm gonna have to get a new book you can see what a mess I have in here misorganized but um, so my book's not very organized, but every password that I have is in here. And then of course, if you do this, what you wanna make sure and do is if you do have to change your password, you know, sometimes the bank makes you update it or um, for security reasons, or maybe you're out and about somewhere and you have to log into something and you've left your book at home and you have to reset your password, you know, things like that. You just wanna make sure and get this book updated so you always have the right information in here. And then the most important thing obviously is don't lose this. Um, that's what the, the potential client asked me the other day. She said, well, that's a really great idea, but where do you keep it and how do you make sure it's safe? So, you know, I used to carry this around in my purse for a while and then I realized that was really dumb. So um, now I just keep it on my desk. Um, I mean, if you have a safe or something in your house, it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep it in a safe, keep it somewhere where, you know, only you know where it is, um, you know, because you never know. But um, this has been a total sanity saver for me password book okay so next thing i wanted to mention is a paper planner and google calendar i actually use both um, now my paper planner i love these you can get these um, there's a variety of different brands on amazon this is the freedom planner um, i love the color of the cover the design it's really cool as i get some fun stickers with different things i buy i put them on here um, Folk Potions, look her up on Etsy. She makes awesome handmade beauty products. This is, of course, Penzi's sticker from Penzi Spices, also an awesome company. Um, anyway, this planner, I'm not going to show you too much. You guys all know what, what a planner looks like, but um, I set it up in the beginning of the year. I have my, have my vision board in here. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I set it up in the beginning of the year with all of my monthly things that I want to make sure I remember. Um, you're giving my dogs their heartworm medicine, um, when our vehicles are due for registration, when the taxes are due, um, 
when we need to call and schedule vet appointments, when we need to call and schedule personal medical appointments, things like that. I do all of that in the first of the year. So basically I organize it one time and then it's all in here for the year. Um, and then I, I don't actually look at it every day, um, but everything's in there and I know it is. So I look at it um, usually like the first part of every week and just make sure I'm all straight with everything that has to be done. Um, and then I also put things in Google Calendar. Some people use it more exclusively than I do. Some people use it for meal planning. Um, some people use it for just everything that they do in a day. I pretty much just use it for appointments that I need to remember. Like if I have a chiropractor appointment or an eye doctor or a dentist or whatever, it's kind of what I use the Google Calendar for. Um, and you know, any business appointments, things like that. Whereas the planner is a little bit more flexible because it's, you can just write whatever you want in there. You know, there's note margins. You can write notes on the sides, on the bottom. You, you can write your grocery list in here if you want to. Um, so it's just really flexible. It's just a book all about everything you need to remember. It helps get it out of your brain, get it on paper. Um, I just really like using one. I know it's not for everybody. Um, Google Calendar is really great as well. Um, you know, Google Calendar, you can set it up to remind you so it can pop up on your phone and tell you an hour before your appointment. Things like that um, are really helpful. Um, if anybody needs help getting anything like that set up, I'd be happy to help answer any questions that you have. Um, Another thing I want to mention is an app called AnyList. Um, I actually have this on my phone and I use it for groceries. Um, so when I know we're running low on something or I need to add it to the shopping list, I just go to my AnyList app on my phone and add it to there. Um, and it actually lets you have multiple lists. So like I live in a small town, our grocery store is really great, but it doesn't have everything that I need. And my husband and I both cook a lot. And, um, you know, there's just no way that our local, our little local store would have everything that we need. So we do buy some things online, um, but I also always have a list for the larger grocery store, the Hy-Vee up in um, like 30 minutes away. So I always keep a list for that store. I usually keep a list for Sam's Club. That's an hour and a half away. Um, and I usually keep a list for Aldi too. Um, we actually got an Aldi here um, 30 miles away about six months ago. It's really cool. So anyway, I have certain things I get at certain stores and the AnyList app lets me um, keep track of what I need from where. It's really handy and then actually while it, while the groceries are in your list, it divides it into categories for you. So if you put milk and bananas and eggs and bread all on your list, it divides them into dairy, bread, produce, meat, um, right there for you which is cool um so that's what i wanted to mention about that um wanted to move on and talk a little bit about bills organizing your bills everybody has different feelings about this but i'm a person i'm a fan of auto pay so i have bank of america and it has a really awesome portal that lets you go in and set up all of your bills that you need to pay and it lets you pay them all online some of them you can automate if it's either set up to where they can send you an e-bill. Not, not all companies can do this. Just depends on who they're integrated with. But some of the companies can send e-bills direct to Bank of America, and then you can have it set up to automatically pay that when it comes. Some of the bills, just if they're the same cost every month and do on the same day, like if your cable bill is $56.30 every month and it's due on the 15th, then you know that and you can go in there and schedule it. So I do that for as many things as I can within Bank of America. And then for the ones that I can't set up that way for some reason, you know, maybe it's like the local water bill or um, the local insurance company, things like that. They're not integrated with my bank. Um, I just set up for their individual auto pays. Um, so, you know, there's a handful of companies that have my credit card information. And then when I owe them money, they just, they just pay the bill. So I don't have to worry about it. Um, some people, you know, it's not for you, I, I mean, and that's fine. Um, I used to be concerned about it and think that they would, if there was a dispute with a bill or something, you know, they're going to take my money and then I won't be able to get it back. Um, I haven't experienced that, um, and for me, it's just worth it. Um, for a while, I didn't have my phone and internet bill set up on auto pay. It was just a paper pay, and I forgot to pay it for like three months and I got a disconnect notice. Um, it wasn't intentional. I just, I just am not in the habit of paying from paper bills. So they were coming in the mail and just getting set on the table and 
um, I mean, you know, so anyway, I set up auto pay and I've paid them on time ever since then. Um, so yeah, so auto pay is a huge saver for me. Um, and, and lots of people, when you set up for their auto pay too, they'll let you tell them what day of the month you want it done. So, so you can control that a little bit if you know when your pay dates are versus when you want to pay your bills. A lot of them will work with you to schedule specific days of the month if, if that's what you need to do. So um, that's something I recommend checking into if you're not already doing it that way. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about meal planning next. I know um, this is about organization. Somebody else is actually presenting about meal planning. I'm excited to hear what she has to say, but um, just briefly wanted to tell, I think, I think it also ties into organization. So um, basically for my husband and, and I, um, formal meal planning doesn't really work for us. Um, it just doesn't, you know, I've tried to have meal plans before where we're going to have this on this day and that on that day and that day comes and, you know, maybe that doesn't sound good or maybe we want to go out for a pizza instead or whatever. And then you have this whole stress added because that's not in the plan. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not supposed to be stressful. It's supposed to be helpful. So, so formal plans don't really work for us, but what we do is on Sunday, um, we go, we have a lot of stuff in our pantry and in our freezer. So on Sunday we go, we look and see what we have in the fridge. So like what vegetables we have left, um, maybe what jars of things are open that need to be finished, things like that. We look and see what we have. And then we go get a couple of proteins out of the freezer to go with those things to make meals from. So we kind of run our meal plan like Food Network chopped um, in that, you know, we, <laughs> we make our meals based on what um, what we need to use up pretty much. Um, and if you don't keep a lot of things on hand in your freezer, one other way you could do it is, you know, go to the grocery store on Sunday and, and take a peek at what's on sale. Um, look at the vegetables that are on sale, look at the meat that's on sale, and try to plan your meals that way. You know, don't look at a specific recipe and say, okay, I'm going to make this on Tuesday. Maybe go look at the grocery store first, see what's on sale, and um, you know, make a plan that way instead. Save a little bit of money. Um, just a couple of tips on that. Um, another thing we do is um, Marshall has to work out of town a lot, so we pack lunch. We don't buy lunch meat because it's got a lot of nitrates in it and other things. It's really high in salt content. Um, it's just not very good for you. So we like to buy um, like whole turkey breast, whole roast beef, whole ham, and we cook them off and then freeze them. Um, and then that way we have lunch meat ready to go for, you know, those things. Um, one thing I just want to mention is when you do freeze it, try to freeze it in big chunks. Don't slice it, then freeze it. Um, we found that the meat kind of loses texture if you do it that way. So we, we just freeze it in chunks and then we slice it when we take it out to thaw. Um, just wanted to mention that. Um, recipes. Recipes have always been kind of an addiction of mine. I used to have a lot of subscriptions to magazines. I've gotten rid of all of those now, actually. But um, one way to keep your recipes organized is Pinterest. I love Pinterest. If you're not on there currently, you might want to check it out. Um, there's a lot of recipes and things on Pinterest that you can find and save to boards and different categories like that. Um, but another thing you can do is pretty much any website that you're on you can save pins from. So if you're looking on foodnetwork.com and you find a recipe that you wanna make, you can actually pin it right to your Pinterest account from the Food Network website. So it's really helpful and um, compatible with, with most websites. Um, so that's just something I wanted to mention. And then something else I do for recipes is um, I have a lot of cookbooks and I just have one here to show you. This is my Instant Pot cookbook. And instead of just putting it on the shelf and like when I want to figure out what we're going to have for dinner, I look through a cookbook because that's just not very time effective. When I get a new cookbook, I take the time and I look through it. I'm sure all of you guys do this too. I flag the pages that look good, that look like the things we'd actually make. But in addition to that, um, I have some of these sticky pads. And so I take a, a sticky note and like for each one of these that I have flagged, I would put the name of the recipe on this. Oh, sorry, I'm not putting it high enough up. I would put the recipe on this sticky pad and the page number. And then when I go to grab this cookbook off the shelf, I just have this sticky note with all of my recipes written on it in the inside cover. So instead of paging through this whole book trying to find what I was looking for, I can just go right to 
So basically I'm making my own table of contents, I guess. Um, but I can just look at this, find the one I'm looking for and go right to that page. It saves a little time that way. Um, I think that was everything I wanted to talk about with you guys about organization. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, so basically, um, you know, I mentioned the Trello and in any of the stuff you have questions about, just ask me and, and, and like I said, I will put some links down in the comments. But um, the Trello app I mentioned, the paper planner, the Google Calendar, the auto bill pay, the Pinterest, the AnyList app, you can see I've got a lot of different things I use, but um, hey, that's kind of what it takes. Um, sometimes I feel like I spend more time getting organized than I actually spend doing the things, but um, you know, we're, everybody's so busy and our brains are all going 100 miles a minute and um, using some of these tools to get things out of your head so you don't have to think about so many things, I think is really important and helpful. So um, have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. Thank you.